Hey everybody, Jason here again with gd &T Basics, again on the video question line with today's topic, functional gauging and CMMs. Today's question is, functional gauging is only if you don't have a CMM, right? Uh, not necessarily true. Uh, we're going to cover that question here from just a high level overview of uh, when we would use CMMs, when we would use functional gauges, and when you would just manually inspect the part. So for those of you that don't know what CMMs are, they're coordinate measuring machines, and they are machines that have probes on them, like you see here, that come in and take points all over our surfaces. These points then create point clouds that represent that surface and can be analyzed back to our future control frames. Uh, these machines are expensive. Uh, they have to be programmed. Uh, a lot of times if you have the CAD model available to you as a programmer, programming goes a lot quicker. Um, but they are very useful and they can inspect a lot of things very closely to these standards. Now what we see here is a functional gauge. So functional gauges, the green part, can inspect parts very quickly like this orange part here um, and they can give us a pass fail uh, on that part. And we, we calculate and we create these gauges based around datums. So the bottom surface of this orange part is likely datum A and the datum simulator is this flat surface of the green gauge. And then you might have some sort of datum structure that's also simulated. It could be the pattern of holes or the ID. Um, and depending on what the feature control frames are showing you, if you're referencing datums at MMB or LMB, uh, your datum simulators might be uh, expanding or stationary uh, in size. So functional gauges can be created again they have to be made and calculated and understood based off the functional intent that's being relayed in the drawing so we'll have a drawing for this part here we'll show an example drawing here and you can see here we have mmb being referenced in a majority of our feature control frames datum feature b being identified as this inside diameter creating datum axis b down the center but everything's referenced at MMB, so we have a stationary pin as our datum simulator, and the size of that is the virtual condition. All these concepts we cover in our advanced course if you're interested in designing functional gauges. Um, but from a high level, the question was, functional gauging is only if you don't have a CMM, right? Um, and that's not necessarily true. Uh, there are pros and cons to both CMMs and functional gauges. And oftentimes you can even intermix them. Uh, some parts, if they're complex parts, might be able to utilize a functional gauge to check, uh, for instance, a pattern of holes, and then use a CMM to check a profile of a surface of the outside surfaces. Um, so if that's how it works out, great, you can utilize both. Um, functional gauges are very useful for quick uh, binary checks. Uh, uh, they're kind of like a go, no-go gauge. Um, it will not give you a value of error. It will not say diametrically the error of these bolt holes. It'll just say yes or no, it passed to the datum reference frame uh, with MMC or MMB. Um, but that's definitely very useful in a lot of scenarios. If you're checking a lot of parts very fast, uh, you can spend the money, the time and the resources to make this fixed gauge uh, and utilize that uh, to speed up your inspection process. Now, if you need to get uh, values and, and direction of error or amount of error for your features, uh, best to either manually inspect these things or if you have access to a CMM and the time to program that CMM, you certainly can put this on there and you get more variable data out of a CMM. Some pitfalls to using a CMM, uh, they are very expensive, uh, but they can be used on many any number of parts, whereas a functional gauge, you have to make a functional gauge for every part. You can't utilize this functional gauge for other parts, obviously. Uh, whereas a CMM, you could. You can use it on all sorts of parts. Uh, they're limited on their size, however. So if you have a large part that doesn't fit necessarily on your CMM, you would be restricted to being able to put that part on that CMM. CMMs are also uh, very time consuming. They have to be programmed. They have to be set up. Uh, oftentimes there's a lot of parts in line to get to the CMM for that reason. They, they can do a lot of things that manual inspections can't do. CMMs are also able to calculate things that manual inspection can't, such as simultaneous requirements um, and uh, various other things uh, like complex surfaces. 
So in choosing to use functional gauging versus CMMs, uh, it's not as straightforward as one might think. If you definitely don't have access to a CMM, uh, you still might have access to creating functional gauges. Uh, hopefully you have access to manual inspections uh, and you can do a mix of functional gauging and manual inspections as well. So uh, as inspectors, we get to utilize all three, manual inspection, functional gauging, and CMMs. So answer to our question today is, not necessarily. Functional gauging is not only if you don't have a CMM. A lot of times both get used uh, even if you have access to a CMM. So thanks for the question and thanks for joining me. We'll catch you on the next video. Our goal is to be your best source for gd and information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd and on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd and community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd and and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.